Welcome to the latest vodcast. You might have guessed aerospace is a thing. We're off to Lothlock Precision Engineering in Woodley, which is near Reading. Now I'm running late, so chocks away, tally ho, and I'll see you there. So good luck with the landing, Colin. Let's hope the rain stops so there's not too much slippage. I'm at Lothlock Precision Engineering. This is our vodcast for this month. Going to start by having a quick walk around the machine shop while we wait for Colin and just showing you what they've got here. Let's start uh, over here with a hard inch bridge port. They've got a few hard inch bridge port machines here from the engineering technology group that they're using vertical machining centers with high speed spindles. That's three axis. If I go a bit further down here, we've got a a very nice spinner U, uh, this is a U1520, a nice machine this, has got a fixed table and a uh, two axis uh, rotary table or trunnion table for five axis machining. That is a very, very nice machine. We've also got a couple of uh, more vertical machining centres to the right of me there. Uh, another Bridgeport again and a Cincinnati. And what I really like when you come in machine shops like this is seeing big chunky billets of aluminium all ready to be machined which just shows how busy this uh, machine shop is because there's loads of it around. Moving backwards down this uh, gangway here, I'm going to move towards uh, their turning. They've got a Samsung PL20 turning centre from Dugard. This is a straight two axis machine. They're not as big into their turning here as they are their milling, but they can certainly satisfy the requirements of a, of a buyer or another engineering company that need turning capacity. Now we're going to move on to now to speak with Jim and we're going to have a look at their latest acquisition which is a, a Dugard machining centre. So Jim, it's not, the, oh, hi, it's not the first time we've been here at Lothlot. I've got to say I'm very impressed. I had a quick walk around the machine shop. Thank you very much. Th this has to be a bit of the jewel in the crown. This is a new machine Absolutely. we're going to do our vodcast in front of today. This is a, a new Dugard. When did you buy it and why did you get it Jim? It's been here a week. Um, Primarily we, we bought the machine because we've got some new business off the back of our AS9100 Revision C approval and it's just capacity, we want the extra capacity. It's a 1200 bed machine, uh, it's got a small footprint. Uh, we, we did a video on this which I'm sure you've probably seen. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's, got, it's got the bigger envelope in a smaller footprint so you get more parts, make more yeah. bits in a smaller area. Absolutely, it's kind of very similar size to the machine it replaced which was an 850 Dugard, um, but obviously we can machine much bigger parts on it. So you're a big Dugard fan, which is good to hear. Yeah. Colin, welcome. A uh, good journey? No, dreadful. Sorry to be late, but uh, as you might expect, problem with quarantine again. We'll have oh, a wash okay. next time uh, Next yeah. time you come. A little bit harsh, Paul. But anyway, as you're probably gathering, aerospace theme. Now, a lot of investment in your machines, Jim, but also new accreditation, is that right? Yeah, we've um, we worked hard and we gained our AS9100 Vision C early part of this year. Um, kind of to future proof the business and to you know be more attractive to aerospace customers and other customers because it's kind of um, it's a way of working you know it's a mindset uh, what, what is involved here what does it mean I, I hear a lot about it but tell me the detail it's it, it's a, it's a bespoke aerospace standard so you have to run your business in a certain way to, to gain it so there's a lot of risk management in there you know your paperwork has to be spot on you have to measure yourself, you measure your suppliers. It's really about managing your business on paper and it's all traceable and everything, you know, and, it, and you can actually prove to someone that you do this, not just talk about it. But there's a lot of thing about, you know, it's all on paper and things like that, but has it added, has added value to your business and got you new business? Yeah, some of the new projects we're working on now are kind of, um, you know, on the back of that. The, our existing customer base is very happy we've got it and we are talking to two new aerospace customers who are very interested in coming in here on the back of it. How easy is it to get? It's quite tough. I mean, it took us probably six to eight months. We had to rewrite our quality system. You know, all our paperwork had to change. The way we do our, you know, our traceability materials, right through the process to CFCs out the door and making sure our, our suppliers actually comply to that as well. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a long-winded process. It, a company this size, other people do have it, but not many. So a bit, well, big investment in time and things like that, but paid off. And I think really the proof is in the pudding in terms of the, some of the components you've made. Yeah. Show us, Roger. 
So this is kind of representative of, a, we've got a whole family of these that we do um, for an aerospace customer and it's, it's kind of our bread and butter really. There's a lot of machine in there. There is a lot of machine in there. The big issue with this one is, is keeping it flat. And how do you do that? Um, I wouldn't like to say really at this point. Hit it with a hammer? No. No, not, not that. I will, I will go that far. It's a trade secret though. Yeah. We won't push you any further on that one. No. Let's have a look at this, this other part as well, because this is uh, equally as impressive. In fact, there's a bit more machining, I believe, on this one. Yes, so this is um, a kind of more complex part that we do. Um, same customer. And um, as you can see, this is a multi-op part at the moment. It's currently done on the three-axis machines. I do three-axis? But we are looking to develop it into a five-axis job. So there's a lot of metal removal on there. What sort of cycle time challenge, what do you reckon? Oh, how many, well, I need to know how many ops first. Um, a 10 to 12 ops on a three-axis machine. I'm going hour and 45. I couldn't confirm that. Uh, okay. Fair enough, same okay. as the tooling on the, on the flat. Yes. It, it we, is, our, we have some trade secrets. And you've got to keep them. Absolutely. Absolutely. On that point, that would lead us into actually automation yes. for you guys. You, you talk about this sort of part. Would you go? Would you ever think about automating it, or automating more? I think at the moment, um, there's, if there's a business case to do that, and we needed to, you know, leave parts running overnight, or you know, because um, with more work comes volume. Exactly. Then we would certainly consider it, but there's got to be a business case as well before you make the investment. As we've already made the investment this year on a business case, so. So, gents, talking of automation, that leads nicely over to Joe, who is at KUKA Robotics. So, Tara, what is it you do here at KUKA? So, KUKA, we are Europe's largest manufacturer of industrial robots, mm -hmm. and we cover every industry from automotive to medical to aerospace. And we like to think ourselves as leaders in Industry 4.0, which I think we're doing quite nicely. Yeah, I do see a lot of Industry 4.0. We've got a documentary coming up soon, so thanks for the plug there. But we <laughs> see your robots in many different environments, like you say. But can you give me some examples? So the industries we're typically involved in are automotive, aerospace, food, process and manufacturing. Um, we're actually in the film industry quite recently. Um, what films? <laughs> we were part of Gravity, so that was used with KUKA robots. You actually see a little bit of a glimpse of an orange robot in the James Bond film. So, yeah, we're out and about. <laughs> An automotive, I know you're in Jaguar Land Rover just down the road. Yeah, we work very closely with Jaguar Land Rover. Obviously, there's multiple sites over the UK, um, and we try and help them as much as we can with their apprentices as well as on the shop floor. So that's good to hear from Joe, who's at KUKA. I mean, automation is a, is a big thing in a lot of companies today. We do a lot of work with Fanner and KUKA now. Yeah. But generally, uh, Jim, how, how is business here? Uh, buoyant, buoyant at the moment. With what we've got and the potential new business, um, we've got some decisions to make in terms of, you know, will we need more investment? Well, you bought three machines in the last 18 months or so? That's correct. So we've got uh, this one we're talking about, and we've got two four axis YCMs that we've. Uh, so a lot of investment in. in machines and also the accreditation. Yeah. yeah. But something that's on people's lips is Brexit. Has that affected you at all? Not currently. Um, the order book's the same. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, a feeling of what's going to happen for everybody in the country, I think, but we're trying to remain positive and, um, you know, at the moment, people are still buying aeroplanes, people want to fly on aeroplanes, so well, uh, you, you we said hopefully it, feel that that's going to, you know, keep the market supported. Your spindles are still turning, your guys are still turning up to work, you're still making invoicing, making parts and making money. Yeah, so last year we had a record year and we're kind of tracking the same this year to, to match that and hopefully beat it. On that point, we're going to go over to Will Sterling, who does a lot of work with MTD CNC. He knows a lot about manufacturing, and we're going to get his take on current events. Thanks, Paul. Well, to summarise the state of the nation for manufacturing right now, I guess you have to look at the SIPS market survey uh, recently, which showed that um, UK manufacturing was contracting at its fastest pace for three years. Uh, that was in the month of July. So there is a, uh, a gloomy picture in the background, um, and we can't really deny that. Uh, whether or not it's all related to confidence in Brexit, um, it's hard to tell. But uh, the SIPS market survey, SIPS is the Chartered Institute for Purchasing Managers and Supply, uh, and their uh, survey is built up on a, on a methodology of both 
orders and confidence for future orders and future business and confidence is, is a bit low um, and one of the effects we've seen is that a uh, weaker pound uh, many commentators were saying that would help UK manufacturers who are exporting and it has indeed proven to be the, uh, the case with uh, one anecdotally one bike company one uh, that makes bike components I think their orders have almost doubled recently in the UK uh, they make their parts here and they sell them to markets including the states uh, they've had to buy more machine tools so that's a good example of that weak pound taking positive effect but um, of course if you buy components uh, your raw materials and materials from Europe uh, that's going to make it more relatively expensive so there's a double-edged sword there um, but yeah on that um, Monetary Policy Committee and SIPS market survey, uh, the weaker pound effects to improve exports has been offset by, by weaker domestic demand. Um, but look, it's very easy to talk ourselves into a dark corner in manufacturing, we're quite good at that. Um, and there are plenty of, plenty of positives too. Don't forget that Boeing uh, made a contract with the UK government, uh, announced straight after the referendum result in June. Um, for a £3 billion investment, creating 2,000 jobs in Britain uh, to, to construct the, um, and to make the, the new Poseidon aircraft for the UK MOD. Um, GlaxoSmithKline, uh, we all know in, in end of July they made an, a, a statement to invest £275 million in their UK R&D and factories, uh, a great boon for the economy. Um, and recently the AMRC Castings, which is a division of the Advanced Manufacturing Technology Centre in Sheffield, part of the University of Sheffield, opened the first uh, custom-built steel foundry in the UK since the 1980s. Uh, they'll be making cast parts there, uh, very encouraging, the first plant of that type since, uh, well, for 30-odd years. Um, and MTD CNC have interviewed several uh, members of their community in the machine tool industry, including DMG Mori, uh, an engineering te technology group, to say that business is brisk, um, they're, they're selling machine tools, they're selling more um, products and that can only mean that um, uh, manufacturing in their sector at least and precision engineering is doing okay. Um, so there's a mixed bag, I guess there always is. Um, there's this undercurrent I, I think which is um, unfortunate of this interest rate cut which signifies a contracting economy. Um, but there's lots of positives to investment in the cat through the catapult centers, places like Warwick Manufacturing Group, we've interviewed Lord Bhattacharya recently, so much investment there. Uh, and also MTC, MTD's uh, community and precision engineering are, are showing that, that people are buying kit. So, um, so plenty of silver linings. So as is usual, an insightful piece from Will. Now moving on, MTD CNC. What have you guys been up to? It's been uh, a very hectic month, even though it's a summer period and lots of people are on holidays. But we've done, over, over the last month, we've produced 70 videos. And some very hot machine shops. Very hot machine, in some very hot machine shops and some hot showrooms. Not to mention DMG Mori once we spent a day there. We spoke with Steve Finn, the managing director, who gave us his uh, opinion on the marketplace at the moment and how actually inquiries are up and sales are up at DMG. Also spoke, spoke with Martin Doyle uh, from the Engineering Technology Group. Equally, he's experiencing the same uh, volume of activity after recent events within Europe. So we've done some sort of videos based around opinions of what's been happening in the market, but also we've done some very technical videos where we've looked at machine tools. We talk about the Dugard one. You know, we're finding that a lot of engineers are watching all of our videos. So over 70 this month, is that right? Yeah, 70 videos with over 60,000 views in one month. And as an example, the guys here uh, at Lothlock, they, they watch all our videos. In fact, this Dugard machine, they've watched the video. And where do they watch it though? On the website? What's happened with that? Well, on the website, the website is continuing to grow since we uh, launched a new site in April. But over recent weeks, we've added a new social media page, which now tracks every bit of our activi activity from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, automatically populates that page so you can get a very instantaneous view of where we are and what we're doing. Uh, that's not the only thing, we've also added a new section which includes services, so if you're looking to find a service engineer or to sell a machine or looking for CNC training. Ball screws I understand. Or even ball screws for machines, spare parts, you can do that very quickly and effectively using our new engine on the website. So the actual site itself is still seeing over 30,000 visitors. Social media outlets are now around about 100,000. So a huge reach so across the market. The reach is phenomenal. And, you know, compared to other ways of getting a message to market, there is nothing better than what MTD is doing at the moment. Essentially instant. Totally instant. We've also got some new customers. Like I say, 
You said about instant and huge reach to the market. What about new faces on the site? Yeah, as always, plenty of new faces, more to see on the website, which is great for the user. I'm not going to say anymore. I'm going to go over to Mark, who's going to tell us about the new faces and the new users of the site, the new technologies and the new machines and equipment you can see on MTD CNC. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm in London, not so sunny today. Uh, I'm at Brompton Cycles now. These guys uh, invested heavily in a, this brand new factory, which is fantastic. So it just shows you that the UK market is very, very positive. Um, and talking about positive things, MTD. We've got three brand new customers uh, in August. Um, the first is Heimer. Um, German manufacturer of tool holders and lots of other tooling solutions. So you're going to be seeing a lot of activity on MTD. Um, secondly, uh, we have SW Machines. Now these guys are very big into multi-spindle vertical machining centers uh, from Germany. Now the, you're going to see a lot of activity on MTD with regards to their machines and reviews. Thirdly, uh, NCMT, very well known uh, from a Makino point of view, however they sell Akumas and now Akumas are fantastic machines and if you're an engineer and you think, ah oh, that's out of my price range, you'll be surprised. So we've got a number of videos that are coming on MTD very, very shortly and also we're going to have the opportunity to actually review Makino EDM and possibly the grinding machines as well at our customers which will be fabulous viewing. So all positive in very cloudy London. Back to you guys. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed this vodcast, Colin. What, what have you learned today other than how to fly a plane? Well, Jim actually told me how to do that flat off camera, so I do know the tra trade secret now. And I'm sure you're not going to tell me. Absolutely not. Anyway, look, I've got a dash. Do you want a lift? You must, what, on your plane? You must be joking. So there you have it. This has been our vodcast for August at Loftlock Precision Engineering. If you want the MTD CNC team to come to your place and shoot a vodcast, contact us on the website on our inquiry page and you can find that on mtdcnc.com. Right, now that's done, I can get off my holiday. Oh, bit windy. Oh, careful, careful. Whoops.